Good morning, scholars, and good morning to our friends out in UPS. Welcome to the first speaker series for Daniel McLaughlin Thero High School. My name is Shelley Goodrum, and I am principal of this wonderful campus filled with eager, excited, and engaged scholars looking forward to grasping nuggets of knowledge from our speakers this morning. We are equally excited for our amazing partnership with United Parcel Service, UPS, who has demonstrated their investment into the lives of our scholars. UPS has been an amazing partner as they exemplify service, integrity, teamwork, and leading by example as a responsible and caring company making a difference in the lives and communities that they serve. In support of our vision to instill hope through maximizing the potential of every student by increasing academic rigor, instructional relevance, and nurturing meaningful relationships to prepare our students for a diverse and changing world, UPS has stood side by side with the DM Thero High School community this year and has committed to providing opportunities in life skills awareness, literacy, mentorship, back to school initiatives, and exposure opportunities. We remain excited about what is to come and look forward to nurturing our scholars collectively as we prepare them to meet the world as a global citizen with solid values and a strong education. Again, welcome to our first speaker series and thank you to our UPS friends. Hey, good morning everybody. I'm glad to be here. My name is uh, Doug Daly. I'm a director for UPS in our internal audit department. I've worked at UPS for 36 years, excited to be here. And I've got the pleasure this morning of introducing our two guest speakers. First, we've got Ms. Farrah Spainauer. Uh, Farrah joined UPS in 2020, uh, supporting our corporate strategy in UPS ventures and mergers and acquisitions activities and in international growth. Fair and earned her JD from Tulane Law School, where she was an articles of editor for the International Law Review, and her AB in psychology from Stanford University. And followed by Fair, we're gonna have James Harris. James actually came to uh, Thero High School about five years ago and gave us uh, a talk. So that was before all of you were probably here, uh, but so he, he's excited to be back here again. Uh, James works in the area of contracts, providing legal support to UPS's Professional Services Incorporated and UPS Supply, supply Chain Solutions. He received his law degree from Chicago Kent College of Law, a Bachelor of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering from Tennessee State University, go HBCU, and obtained an MBA at Emory's Gazueta School of Business. Uh, please welcome Ms. Ferris Bainauer, followed by James, who will share their stories of success. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Oh, good, you responded, that's great. So a little bit about me. I am Farrah Spainauer, and I'm married, and I've got two boys. One will be 12 tomorrow, and one will be 16 next week. So they send their apologies because you have to listen to me. Uh, what, where, whereas they think that you know I'm a little nutty sometimes as mom. So I'm gonna talk to you a lot about uh, my experience through life, and it's really been through a couple of different lenses. So I'm not from Atlanta, surprise. I'm actually from Los Angeles, California. And my father was an, an, an electrician, uh, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. So when he died, I still have his union card, so union trade is a very good thing. My mother is an immigrant and she was a naturalized citizen. She knows way more about the US and the US government than I ever will. So that's my background. Working class family, father who was in rural East Texas and was part of the Great Depression and then became part of the Great Migration coming out of the South to try to find jobs that paid more money and to create opportunities when people like me, his daughter, came around. So that's my, my background. Now, I did go to Stanford, but let me tell you how I got there. 
when I was just slightly older than you are, I had my first encounter with, we called them the guidance counselor at the time. And my guidance counselor, our guidance counselor, told me, well, you really need to go to college? You know, why don't you go to trade school? I mean, there's the military too. Or just find somebody to marry who can take care of you. Really? How about that? So, number one, I'm going to preach because I'm a mother. My lesson is you are who you say you are. You decide who you are. There will be plenty of people who will doubt you, who will try to keep you down for whatever reason, but you are who you decide to be. So decide to be whatever it is that your imagination can come up with. Whatever you're interested in, do that. Read about it, learn about it, go experience it, go all around. One of the great things about UPS is it's like a candy store. <laughs> that there are so many opportunities to do so many things that I don't know how you fit it all in. Doug's had a great career 30 plus years and so maybe he's been able to, to see and do and touch everything that he wanted. But I've only been there for a little over a year and uh, I can't wait to see what all the opportunities opportunities are that are in front of me. Yesterday I had a delivery guy come to the house and you know I got off my call, quickly turned off my camera, ran outside and he was dropping something off and he had this big truck and he did this this lift and everything just sort of slid back. So I started trying to talk him into, hey can I do that? Because that looked like a whole lot of fun. You know I do work for UPS. It didn't work but I tried it. I really did try to try it. So Learn from my guidance counselor experience. I had some opportunities there to react in the moment. I'm glad I didn't because the story could have turned out differently. Um, she finally was addressed, but that was uh, what we were working on. Surround yourself with people who believe in you. Surround yourself with people who have as much, if not more, to lose than you do. And invest in yourself. Lesson number two. I, after uh, law school, I started working at a law firm here in town. I would moved to Atlanta by then. <clears throat> and uh, my lesson to you is expand your network. Meet people. Get out of your comfort zone. Don't hang out with just your friends. Go see what other people are doing because you never know. It is crazy to me how much life has these circular moments and these weird random things that happen. So I will admit my law firm days were a little rough at times. <laughs> There are times where I was like, man, I don't know if I can do this. Man, I don't know if I want to do this. What is this? Um, there were all-nighters, lots of tough work. And it wasn't the work that I was afraid of. It was really, you know, well, what am I doing? I don't understand what I'm building. Remember, I'm the first in my family. My father had 13 brothers and sisters. Nobody went to law school. We didn't know how to do this. We didn't understand what this was. I didn't know the game. And so I now realize in the rearview mirror that I was learning the game. I was learning corporate America. I was learning how people think, what they cared about, why I see certain things on the news, why I saw stuff in the newspaper. So figure out wherever you are, what you can learn from that opportunity. So one day, an opportunity never comes at you the way that you think that it's going to. One day I'm sitting in my office, legitimately, lean back in my chair, I pick up the phone, it was somebody who I had worked with at that firm who was filling in for somebody else on maternity leave. I was looking out the window at CNN Center. She said, hey, would you consider? I said, heck yeah, I'd consider. <laughs> what do I need to do? Who do I need to talk to? I'll be over there tomorrow. And that is how I got my job at Turner Broadcasting. Now, the crazy thing about this story, the woman who called me, we went to college together. We didn't know each other. We didn't know each other at all. Had never met this woman until I stepped foot into this firm, and even that took a little bit of time. Had no idea. We were not aware of each other in college. If I would known more of my college mates, I mean, I know, I would know the Google people and the Amazon people and the Apple people. Um, there are a lot of people who you never know what they might add to your life or what they may go on to do that might be helpful to you. 
So the other crazy story from that law, those law firm days, I distinctly remember there was a partner. So you come in, you're an associate, and then you go on, and that's when you like learn all the rules. I had to learn the SEC and the FCC and all of these government agencies, because again, I didn't know, I, I didn't come out of this world, right? And there was a partner who came by, actually she was a senior associate at that time, and she said, I need you to do this. I was in the conference room, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm working on this thing, I can't do that. She's like, you're gonna do it, and it's due by midnight. What? <laughs> I was shocked. So fast forward, it's not like I didn't like that woman, but it was a startling lesson. Fast forward, I had a long, long key conversation with her last week because now we're friends and her daughter is a couple years older than my son, away at college. She's now on the board of Spelman and I'm trying to hire some folks, so who do I call? I call her. So you never know. Scarier story out of those law firm days for me was that I walked into my oldest son's classroom and there was a partner who that woman worked for there and I was like, dear goodness, why are you here? And it turns out I love his wife. I was scared to death of this man. I love his wife. I love his, his daughter. His daughter is now one of my best friends. His grandson is now one of my son's best friends. You just never know how life is gonna play out and what, what opportunities you'll have. So make the most of them. My next tidbit for you is you know way more than you think you do. You do. Now, when I was at Turner, um, I started at Turner when I was in my 20s and then my 30s and little 40s too. But anyway, when I started at Turner, I had all sorts of experiences. And I said, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll take care of that. I had no clues to what I'm doing. But you figure it out and you draw on every experience that you've ever had. I don't mean your textbook. I don't mean that you need to memorize what's on page 82. You do, but it's not just that you bring to bear all of your life experiences. So my job at Turner at one point involved, they let me have a budget, I had about $7 million, and I was to fly out to Hollywood, go meet with Hollywood agents, and go get talent to produce shows for us. I've never done that before. But you know, growing up how I grew up, I knew how to budget, I knew how to, to stretch some dollars to get to get some value. So that was sort of what I drew from to, to augment and enhance sort of the textbook learning, if that makes sense. So never discount what you've gone through, struggle, joy, whatever it is, never discount it. Discount it because there's always something there that you can use for later. I call it pulling the lightning bolts out of the sky. You don't know which one you're gonna need, but at some point you will pull a lightning bolt out of the sky and it will have application for you that will advance you through your career. Now, I'm gonna take an opportunity to brag because maybe we don't do that enough. So at Turner, I did a lot of fun projects. You go to New York City and you tell your Uber driver, take you to the Whole Foods on Columbus Circle. I did that, I built that, that's my building. I paid for it, I did that. That is what I did as a lawyer. Now, when you're looking at the task in front of you, it's sort of like looking at textbook page 84. You, you don't know that what you're doing and building is gonna turn into the hottest Whole Foods in the US, as far as I'm concerned. The one on 14th Street, not bad, but you, you don't know that. You don't know that the, some of the world's most expensive restaurants are gonna take up residence in your building. You don't know that millionaires and gajillionaires are gonna take up residence. You don't know that Trump's gonna be mad because we dwarfed his tower next door. You just don't know that. You're focused on doing the best that you could do with what you have. So be good. You don't know what it's gonna translate into. Be good. And you may not know it immediately. Just be good. Be focused and be good. Another brag, if you watch the Hawks on TV, I did that, that's me. I did it. I sold the rights to Fox um, Sports South, and that's why we watch the Hawks on TV. I did this. We sold um, our hockey team. Sorry if you're a hockey fan, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I did that. But I did that. 
Now, did I study exactly some manual for how to do that? No. But in the rear view, rear view mirror, I did that because I was ready. I didn't know that's what I was getting ready for, but I was ready and willing. So step forward, take your shot. You never know what it's going to translate into. Then I'll just wrap up, and I'm, I'm happy to take questions if, if we want to do that. Um, just figure out what matters to you. So now I'm at UPS, and I'll be honest that I thought I was going to retire. I'm like, I've, I've done well. You just heard me say I did that. I did some good stuff. And so now it's time for me to pivot and do more service. I've always been engaged in service, and I thought maybe it's time to do that. Maybe I need to go look at a foundation and figure out what to do. I can, you know, I can afford to take a job that doesn't pay me what I was making before. Like, it's, it's time. This is what my, my soul tells me it is time to do. And once again, got some random phone call from a friend of my husband's who said, hey, would she consider? I was legitimately getting ready for a Christmas party, trying to get cute, or used to wear heels, like doing that whole thing. And I was like, what? You're telling me that an opportunity just dropped in as I'm in the bathroom trying to put on lashes. Really? Okay. I'll talk to you. And they said, no, no. Now, I was in the building within 14 hours and had a job <laughs> in, in a few days. Like, I don't know where that came from. Um, so be open. UPS is a place where service is paramount. Our purpose statement, they have a purpose statement. That alone excitement excites me. Moving the world forward. I'm all about the world. Like I said, expand your networks, travel, go see places, get out of your comfort zone, be uncomfortable someplace else. Moving the world forward, check. By delivering what matters, check, check, check. Like, I think that this is the place for me. And as Doug said, I joined in 2020. Well, we all remember 2020. It's never going to be perfect. Timing is never going to be perfect. You've got to take your shot. Otherwise, you just may not have it. So y'all are way less scary than the second graders that I talked to last, last week. Um, and I can tell you, they asked me if I had a cat, and that threw me. Um, and I don't know why they asked me that. It was the most random question, but they're second graders. So I can tell you guys, and having a 10th grader myself, take the shot. My kids, you know, they feel like I'm always with the coachable moments and always talking and all this. It's because I really earnestly have a passion that you believe and invest in you. You take everything that you know, everything that you're doing, and translate that into meaning in your life. Now, here's the nuts and bolts. I'm a lawyer, corporate lawyer. Never been in a courtroom, never wanted to be. I was a really quiet child, very, very quiet, so much so that people like, can she talk? Like, yeah, she can. She, I guess she just has nothing to say. To some extent, I'm still like that, but it periods. But never wanted to be in a courtroom. Being a lawyer was not something that I aspired to do. It was not some burning desire from the age of two. At one point, I wanted to be a doctor. I don't like hospitals. Then I wanted to be an architect. Again, no role models, didn't know how to do that. And then I thought, you know what? A lawyer, you can do anything with a law degree or an MBA, but you can do anything. It gave me a little time after college to figure out, okay, I can do this because I wasn't ready. You don't have to know. You don't have to be super, super certain. If you are, that's great. I applaud you. You're in, in better shape than, than some. But take your time. Like I said, look inward. Figure out what it is that you want to do. So I'm going to wrap up. I promised my children that I would not do any sort of crazy TikTok moves or I would try really hard not to say drip or sauce, but she's wearing a Gucci mask back there. And Gucci was actually on the prohibited list. I was not supposed to say Gucci or stay Gucci or anything like that. So I just broke that and I owe my son five bucks. So with that, I'm happy to conclude, uh, unless there are questions. Yes, sir. How did I figure out going to college? How I pay? I can't, can't hear you. How you? 
I did manage to go to college and how I, how I procured, like how I figured all that out. Um, so like I said, nobody in my family had gone to college. My dad never went to college. And I was at a school and I knew that we had this guidance counselor and at some point we were supposed to meet with her. Um, I remember her name to this day because she made quite an impression. And I had friends around me who said, you really need to do something with that. You're smart. You always have your nose in a book. You like to read so much. You need to do something. You should go to college. Now these are people who were in those circles, who were hip to the game. They understood their parents had gone to college. And so that was kind of my first exposure to, oh, okay, I, you know, school's all right with me. I like it. It means I don't have to get a job from, uh, for a while, right? So it was really people around me, not my direct family, not my direct, not what I saw every day, but it was people around me who said, no, 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 you, you should go to college. This is what college is, because I didn't know. I just sort of went to school every day, and, and that was that. I could not have, um, you know, I, who knows? Would I have gone to college without those folks? I don't know. Um, but I think about now that I live in Atlanta. I grew up in Los Angeles. I miss the beach a lot. I like water, right? And I think there was just something, you know, there were enough little sparks and I was paying attention to enough little nuggets that it includes me. Oh, that's, that sounds like an adventure. Oh, and here's another reason. I read a lot. Like I used to get in trouble for being under the covers with the flashlight and being up for way too late. So these things that I was reading about, and I wasn't reading Aristotle or Plato or anything like that. Like I was reading the cat mysteries. Maybe that's why they asked me about the cat, right? So, you know, I read a lot of stuff. And so I knew that there was a world beyond my world. I knew that. I didn't know how to get there, but I knew that. And so, light, pulling the lightning bolt out of the sky, that I was able to figure out, this could be my chance. I could go see something. Like, people go away to college. Wow, okay, let me try that. And that's how it happened. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I just had a quick I just had a quick question about you talk about taking your shot. So what advice would you give to someone who you said is I was a teenager at that point who was willing to take that shot? So how would you what advice would you give to that person when it comes to also addressing the gap of skill that may be in the back of their mind? Because I they, they teach a lot of You know, you're spot on, and I probably should have addressed this earlier. So to the second graders last week, the book that I read said, what would you do with the chance? And the book basically says, you know, a chance came by me. I, I ignored it because, you know, I, I tried it. I failed. I was embarrassed, and it was terrible. And so I stopped taking chances. And then I noticed that no more chances came my way. And so, of course, by the end of the book, he sees a chance, and it's some big, fat, huge chance. He jumps on it, rides it, and it was great. You're not in second grade. So what I'll say to you is you are going to fall down. You are going to be embarrassed. You have got to get back up. So it doesn't mean that you don't do something. You learn the word and. I took a chance and that didn't work out, even though I'm gonna tell you it actually probably did because there was something else that you didn't see that you got out of that experience. And let me tell you something about embarrassment. I've been embarrassed. I embarrassed my, my kids. So what? So what? First of all, you are the only person who thinks about you as much as you do. If you think somebody else is obsessed with what you did or some mistake you made or what you did, they're not. They just aren't. You may not be able to see that, but they just aren't. They have moved on. Even if somebody, you know, it does take some interest in what it is that you're doing, move on. We have all got to figure out resilience and how to pick ourselves up. 
I've made plenty of mistakes, plenty. I've made some costly mistakes. Nothing is perfect. You are not supposed to be perfect. You are perfectly imperfect and you're trying. So my father, my biggest role model, he would always help somebody if they were trying to help themselves. He would, he would you know, reach in his billfold, it's called a billfold, and you know, if somebody needed help or, or $2 or whatever, he would give it to them um, because they were trying. It doesn't mean that he was betting on every sure thing, but he was invested in people. Invest in yourselves. You fall down, get back up. Yesterday our CEO said, look, you get fired, get another job. I was like, oh my goodness, you know, because that's a startling thought, but that's exactly what you should do. Everything is not going to work, work out the way that you think that it will or should. So remember that life and you are perfectly imperfect. You can do things, you can do hard things, you will do hard things, you must do hard things. And even if it doesn't turn out perfectly, you can do that with a little fear. Just get out there. That's my advice. <laughs> and now, Mr. James Harris. All right, thank you very much. He actually made me think about something with that last thing you said. Uh, Nelson Mandela has a, a famous quote that says, I never lose, only win or I learn. So we can always learn from things that, you know, it doesn't quite come out the way we want it to. But uh, I'm happy to be here. Uh, this is a nice school. Uh, I'm so glad to see you guys here today. And what, my, what I want to do today is that I must tell you a little bit about myself so you can kind of understand my perspective. But most importantly, I want to make sure that I leave time for you because what's most important, I think, out of this whole session is that you get information for you so you can make the best decisions to, to meet your goals and to be inspired to move forward from here. So as I speak and as you think about what Farrah talked about, think about questions that you might have that you want answers to and I want you to take full advantage of us being here, including Doug, so we can give you information to make you better prepared when you leave here to make better decisions for your future. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm only a baby. I've only been at UPS for like 22 years, Doug. So I'm still learning. But um, my background is that I'm, I'm originally from Chicago. And I went to predominantly black schools from kindergarten all the way through college. So, and it was public schools and I went to an HBCU, I went to uh, Tennessee State. And I, uh, I studied engineering, did internships through college and came out and worked for General Motors as an engineer for a while. Um, I got the bug, I knew I wanted to go back to school and I, and I got inspiration when I was an undergrad too. That's something I got out of going to an HBCU. It really inspired me to do things after I got out of college, whether it was graduate school or starting your own business or what have you, we all came out inspired to do more than just get a college degree. And that's, I think that's something you should be doing. People talk about college, it doesn't have to be college, it could be a trade school, but you need to start thinking about a plan and, 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 and have a goal and start putting together the steps to get to that goal. But, um, so I, I came out of uh, Tennessee State, I worked as an engineer and I got a bug about you know, going to law school, combining my engineering background with law seemed pretty exciting to me. Uh, but I still liked engineering, so I applied to both graduate school and law school at the same time. Uh, I got accepted into Georgia Tech's master's engineering program. General Motors was gonna pay me to go to school and pay me half my salary while I was at school. Uh, however, I decided to go to law school because I just thought it was exciting to combine an engineering with law and become a, a patent attorney. And I did that. And I worked in Chicago for a firm, uh, uh, we call it an intellectual property firm, patents, trademarks, copyrights. And I did that for like three or four years before I moved to Atlanta, did the same thing with a boutique firm, and finally came on to start working with UPS. And with UPS, I started learning more about the business. And I took advantage of an opportunity to get my master's uh, in business right here at Emory and had UPS actually pay for it. 
So another opportunity that was given to me and I was able to take advantage of it based on the position that I was in. Um, I'm growing down working, UPS has been here for a while, but I have three children. And I did in your, your position in terms of a high school student, uh, but I've had three kids kind of go through that process too. So I've been able to give them what I've learned so they can have benefits and not making some mistakes that I may have made because similar to Farrah, um, I was just, you know, my, my parents uh, did not have college degrees, so did not have a college education. So certain things they couldn't tell me and I had to learn on my own. Um, so I've been blessed to be able to, to take my learnings and pass them on to my kids. And, and we wanna be able to you know, pass our learnings on to you as well. But I have a, a daughter that's, uh, she's 22. She graduated from Hampton University with a chemical engineering degree. She's now working toward her PhD degree in biomedical engineering at Emory and Georgia Tech. I have a son who is in his second year at Stanford who's majoring in uh, material science engineering. And this, this summer he actually be back in Atlanta working for Boston Consulting Group. And finally, I have an 11th grader who's going through many of the same things you all are going through now. Uh, she's in school. Um, she'll be you know, in somebody's program this summer. There's one thing that I emphasize with my kids, I want them to do something every summer. We talk about this summer vacation thing. I did the summer vacation thing, but I kind of multiply it three months of your summer times 12 years. So that's three years of education that you're not getting if you're not doing anything educationally during the summers. So you're putting yourself as a, at a disadvantage because if you are thinking about going to college, you're not competing against the people that are sitting next to you right now. You're competing against kids from other schools and from other countries, even other countries where they go to school year round. So I'm not saying don't have fun during your summer, but see if you can incorporate something education during your summer so you have an edge when you come back. So just, just, just something to think about. Now, going back to having a plan, um, we all go through different avenues. And like I said, I went from, and I actually wanted to be an architect before I went to engineering. So we, we have a plan and sometimes that plan changes. But I need you to start thinking about, and as adults, we always say, you know, what's your 10-year plan or what's your five-year plan? I'm asking you, what's your one-year plan? What's your two-year plan? What's your three-year plan? And if you, if you have a goal, you need to set up the steps to, to, to get you there. Because what you don't want to do is a year from now, or two years from now, you haven't accomplished anything but past time. Um, Something as simple as good, you know, my parents told me to get good grades. Well, I'm a kind of, you know, I'm kind of, well, why? You know, because no one told me this, you know, why? If I could get C's and still graduate, why should I work hard and get A's? Duh. Well, if you get A's, it'll put you in a better position to get into the school you might want. If you get challenges paying for school, it may give you a scholarship. Um, you know, and I throw this question out to you. How many of you, know and have met with your, your, your school counselor and had a discussion about college. I see one hand and, and, and a couple hands and, and many of you may have. I, I didn't know my counselor until I was almost a senior in high school. And she was, you know, and I know it was more my junior and I, you know, I, I came into high school with high scores. They put me in all these honors courses and I was I was mad, like, why they put me in all these hard courses? You know, I, no one was telling me, this is, a, this is an honor, it's a chance that you get higher scores and get into schools you want, but I had no one to counsel me, I had to kind of learn that on my own. Um, but it's okay, get good grades, you know, get, get into the school you want to. So, but I, I say that to go talk to your counselor, use these resources while you're here. Um, they can give you some insight, they may have some connections at some colleges you might want to go to. But don't become a senior like, oh shoot, I don't know who my counselor is. And you're still trying to figure out what you want to do when you have resources here all the time. You've got teachers, you have administrators here, they've been through school, they've been sitting in the same places you have. You have resources you see every day, pull them to the side and say, hey, I got a question for you. Don't just go up and down your day every day going through the hallway 
you know, it's okay, and you should, you should enjoy the moment. I think part of living life is planning for your future while you enjoy today. So there's nothing wrong with you enjoying today. You can work hard, study hard, and still enjoy um, your friends, your clubs, your sports. They're all, they're all part of growing. But don't forget about tomorrow. Still do what you need to do for tomorrow. Um, that's that's kind of it. I, I actually want to spend most of my time answering questions and giving you information so you can make decisions that you need to make to put yourself in a better place. Whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior, you need to be thinking about what you want to do and how you're going to how you're going to get there. And I really got a wealth of information. I've gone through the process of you know, with my own kids in terms of researching, you know, the scholarship opportunities, the importance of internships. Um, we talked about networking. Um, you know, my kids to an extent, they used to kind of just, you know, they, they loved each other and they, 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 they networked with each other. And I, I explained it's important for you to spread your network out and let people know who you are. And, I, and I mean, let me tell you this too. It's not always about how smart you are. Um, and this is a lesson I learned. Because, you know, I'm, 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 I, can, I can talk and I'm pretty free. Now, I haven't always been that way. And, you know, I tend to you know, take care of my business and keep going. But then I started noticing that there were others that I knew were not as smart as me. But they were getting the opportunities that I was not getting. I was like, well, how is this? Well, guess what? They opened their mouths up. And they said, this is what I want to do. And they told people, this is what I want to do. What do I need to do? So when opportunities came, those people were on their mind. They got the opportunity. So even though I probably could have done the job better than they, no one knew about it because I didn't open my mouth. I opened my mouth a couple of times, and opportunities started coming my way. I haven't shut up since. So, you know, I don't care if you're shy or you're outgoing. You need to be able to communicate. So you don't have to be the class clown to be able to communicate. You can be very serious and let people know what your intentions are. And you would be surprised how when people really care how they will respond. So with, with that said, like I said, I don't want to just kind of lecture, but I want to put out enough information to stir some thoughts in your minds about what questions you would have answered to put you in position to do well. And I'll say this, that you learn, you can learn from your own experiences, but you also can learn from others. You can learn from your own mistakes, but you can learn from others' mistakes also. So it's not that you can't get where you want to by yourself, but it may take you a lot longer if you don't have the information that others have that you don't. So get your information so you can, you can get you the path that you want to be, uh, we want to be on as soon as you can. So I'm gonna leave that there. If anybody has any questions, I encourage you, if you've got any questions, take advantage of it now while you have people who may have some good answers for you. And the questions that you ask may be good questions for your classmates and the answers may be good for them too. So you may be doing a service for them by asking your question for yourself. So you know, please feel free to. Yes, sir. He said, first impressions. How important are first impressions? Oh, first impressions are important. And it's not like you don't get a second or third chance, but sometimes first impressions are everything. So you want to put, always put on your, your best foot forward because you may not get that second or third chance. So it's very important. It's not the end of the world if you don't make it, but a lot of times you can lose out on opportunities if you, do, if you don't make that first impression. And that could be in terms of not how you speak, it could be in terms of how you look. If I'm going to an event and I really don't know the dress code, I may play it safe and dress a little bit over than dress under. Because I don't think you give a bad impression by dressing over, but you may give a bad impression by dressing under. So I would be more prepared than, than, than not prepared. Mm -hmm, sure. Uh, yes, I guess my question is, um, when you talk about, uh, you said networking, and you also mentioned, um, it was something specifically I was going to address, 
how people open their mouths to communicate that you felt like you're not going to say as as qualified, but you knew that you probably knew more than them. So I guess my question is, for those people who probably weren't as qualified, but they opened their mouths and still got that position, how difficult was it, I guess, once they got that position, for them to keep that position based off of they may not have known as much? Was it more of a on the job learning or did they have people there to you know, assist them uh, or, or how, how does that go? Okay, I, it's a great question I, and I think Farrah kind of answered it earlier but sometimes we get thrown into positions that we have no background in. Actually, UPS does that to us all the time. <laughs> Since I've been at UPS, I came there as a patent attorney. Uh, next thing you know, I took over their whole trademark portfolio. Uh, I, was, I was responsible for all their sponsorships. So we did um, Olympic sponsorships. We sponsored you know, you know, teams. We sponsored NASCAR teams. We, we did the sponsorship for what, Phillips Arena at the time. Um, I was responsible for all the advertising at UPS um, in terms of um, I reviewed all of our print and ad ads. Um, plant engineering. I was responsible for all the real estate at UPS. I mean, I didn't have those backgrounds, but they put us in those roles. They gave us support, but you have to be willing to learn. I, I, I feel so blessed to have gained experience in all these different areas. And, you know, and I'm still, you know, gaining experience in the areas that I haven't been involved in. You know, I was an engineer at one time. So, I mean, I mean, be happy that you're being thrown into something you don't know. Look at it as an opportunity to learn something and to and to be better. Mm -hmm. One thing I would add to what he just said is that, and this is my experience at UPS. So after 36 years of working at UPS, I've had like 14 different jobs at UPS. They're never, and sometimes, like he said, you might be doubting yourself and thinking, why are they putting me in this role? But the reason they're putting you in that role is because they've already figured out that you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. You may not think that you have th that skill set, but the people who put you there, they know that because th th they're not going to put you in a position where you're going to fail because that's going to look bad on them, right? So they're only going to put you in positions where they, they already fi have figured out, well, Doug is a good fit for this. Even though he doesn't have the experience, maybe he's never done it before, they're not going to put you in a role that you're going to fail them because it's going to look bad on them at the end of the day. So that's how you can get more confidence in yourself by saying when you are faced with those situations where you feel like, man, well, I, I don't know how to do this. I haven't done it. But they put me in this job. You're there for a reason. You've already proved whatever you've done in the past is proven that you're ready for that. And that's why they put you there. Yeah. And, and guys. I'm like the last speaker, so between Doug, Farrah, and myself, feel free to, you know, ask any questions. Uh, so we really want you to leave here with, with knowing more than when you came in. Okay. Take your time. This is part of the learning experience. And I'm going to tell you something about speaking. The more you do it, the more comfortable you get. Okay. So, like, some people, they have problems like speaking, right? even though they're not shy. Some people have other problems, right? So, how are they supposed to get out of the comfort zone? You know, that's, I love that question. I, I, the, the answer is kind of simple, but. You got to do it. And as I'm speaking to you today, I haven't been the biggest public speaker ever. It wasn't until I went to Tennessee State and I got thrown into some leadership positions. Well, my goal was at Tennessee State was get your engineering degree, make some good money. That was my focus. <laughs> and I got thrown in to leadership positions because I guess people saw leadership potential in me and I was heading all these organizations and I was like, dang, I'm, I guess I'm kind of good at this. And the more I did it, the more comfortable I got. 
So there's things inside of you that you don't even know until you try. So you can't just sit back and don't try because you'll never improve. You know, it's like learning a language. If you never spoke the language before, you're not just going to walk out and all of a sudden be fluent in it. You got to start trying. You're going to learn the more you try it. And, you know, you make mistakes, but, you know, you learn from your mistakes. So you got to get out your comfort zone. You don't grow. You don't grow unless you step outside your comfort zone. Okay. Any other questions? Because we want to, I know you guys got classes to go to, but we want to make sure you get all the information you can before you take off. Because think about it. Do you have your plan in place? Do you know what you're going to do? And if you don't, we need to hear from you. Yes. Okay. Um, 11th grade is a very stressful year. I have a daughter. Yes, she, she tells me about that. <laughs> basically give up because all the stress that they got to go through, whether it's like um, signing up for scholarships, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So like, what advice would you give us to not give up? I, I, I love this question because I had to lift this through my own children. Um, and my daughter, she, she's in 11th grade. She just took the SAT. So she got to take these standardized tests. Got to have good grades. I need to be a real honest student. I want to have some fun. You know, I, she, you know, she plays soccer, I got a sport I'm doing. You have to prioritize what are the things most important to you. So what's most important to you, I'm assuming right now is being able to graduate and get into, are you looking to go to college? So what's gonna help you get in college? Um, the easy things are get the best grades you can. Everybody's not gonna graduate valedictorian. And believe me, I went to school with people about guitar and I did better than they did because, you know, it's what, it's what you apply. But what are the most important things? You know, you need to get the best grades you can. You need to research the school that's going to be good for you. It's a little different now with COVID that we all can't go on college campuses. But there's a, tons of information that you can find online and you even have people give their opinions who have attended these schools that you can read and get a feel that these schools could be good for you. You need to be able to pay for school. I don't know what your financial situation is. I don't know what your parents' financial situation is. School is expensive. So in Georgia, they do have a HOPE scholarship. So I wouldn't rule out schools right here in Georgia that you can take advantage of lower tuitions. And if there are scholarships at other schools, you know, you need to look at those because you need to be realistic. You know, you, you do all this work, you get accepted to a school that's, you know, you know $50,000 a year. You don't have a scholarship unless your parents can bring it out their pocket. You can't go. So just be smart. So I, I want to give you all these things you need to do, but think about the ones that are most important to you for to get you where you want. Right now, you're trying to get in college. So my advice to you was continue to do the best you can with your grades. All the, scholar, all the schools now are not requiring you to have standardized tests because of COVID, but if you can take a test, go ahead and take it because you may surprise yourself and do well, and that's something else you can put on your, your application to college to get accepted or possibly get a scholarship. Um, if there are other things that you're involved in that you can still do, do that too, because when you apply to these colleges, everybody's going to look at the school and still have scores, but I won't say, well, outside of just studying, what else do you do? How did you apply yourself? So I don't know what you're involved in, but show that you have a passion in something you know, outside of just basic studying like everybody else, because to get into good schools, you need to stand out. What makes you different from him, her, him, and everybody else? What's special about you? If you got some special things, work on those things to make yourself stand out in that. And all that other noise, if it's stuff you don't have to have in your life, just put it away if it's, if it's making you feel overburdened. Because you need to focus on those things that are gonna be important to get you where you wanna go to the next step. And that's something you should learn in life. You don't wanna be feel overburdened in everything. You need to be able to step back. And you need to learn to say no sometimes. Because uh, a lot of people may ask things to you to do with things. And if it's not critical for you moving forward, sometimes you gotta, you gotta let that go. Oh, that was nice that they asked me to do that. Well, do you really have time to do that? So just, just think about it. Yes.
get you through to get you through all of this other stuff that that there's stuff now where I'm like, Oof, I want to give up too. Find your hype music. Surely there's like a song, a scripture, a book, something, your friends. Stay hype. When you want to give up, you find something that you got to dig in deep and keep going. Whatever it's going to take so that you can do that focus. Like if you got to turn the music up to 10 and play your favorite song on repeat, do that. Because you are at the goal line. And it seems stressful now, and it is, don't get me wrong, if I had to do school again, I, you know, it, it, it would be more than a notion, it's a situation, right? So, um, there's a lot. People acknowledge it's a lot. Folks are trying to figure out how to make it not be quite so much. But again, you have more in you than you know. And I can tell you, living a life of regret, like, man, why didn't I do that, is an awful way to live. You think you're stressed out? You want to live with that? That's awful terrible. You don't want that. So if you have something within you, you are almost at a goal and this is something that you want, do it. You will figure out a way to do it. Okay, that was awesome. Two great speakers. Uh, more to come. So UPS and Thero High School, we're partners now. We're going to be coming. You'll see more people from UPS come out, give more talks like this. And we, we, so we really look forward to engaging with you. Just to recap some of the messages that uh, Farah and James talked about, believe it in yourself, right? That's probably the most important thing, believe in yourself because you could do whatever you really want to do. The second thing is building a network. After working at UPS for 36 years, the two most valuable things I've learned was the importance of having a network, of having people that I could reach out to to help me because when you have a network, that means you have advice, that those people are advisors, they're advocates, and they're your sponsors. So having that network is so important. And the last thing that I learned at UPS is ask for what you want. If you want something, you have to ask for it. Because if you don't, because the world is so busy now, if you don't ask, tell me what you want, I'm assuming you're good. So if James doesn't come to me and say, Doug, I don't like how this is going down, I'm just assuming that, well, he hasn't said anything to me, so he must be good. Farrah must be good because they're not bringing it to my attention. So ask for what you want. Thanks, everybody. It was great being here this morning. We look forward to having more, more conversations like these. Hope you guys have a great uh, rest of your week. Thank you.